Grab your Bibles, if you would. Um, I do encourage you to get a physical Bible um, to really study from. Get familiar with it. Get to where you can maneuver through the Bible. Like, you know, if people says turn to Genesis and you like in the back of the book, you got to study the Bible. Okay. It happens. When you first come to the Bible, you don't know. And so that's why you got to get you a physical Bible and, and practice looking up scriptures. You're going to get used to the word. You're going to get familiar with it. Underline it. Make notes. Put your family's pictures in your Bible so that as you're studying the scripture, you pray. Because here's why. Here's what I've learned. I am 100% for reading version apps, iPads, iPhones. I am 100% for reading the Bible that way. But just an observation. The people who know the Bible the best have a physical Bible. Just an observation. I think what it is is you become attached to that word, whereas your phone is also where you look up social media, where you call your bros, your homies, whatever y'all kids today say. I don't know what y'all say anymore. But your iPad, you watch movies, and you read the Bible. But your Bible is only the Bible. And so it's a great thing. So get you a translation you can understand, and then Google it and see if there's any errors in it. And fix anything if there are, because sometimes there's some translation errors or some scriptures they left out. You can go put it in your Bible, okay? And make sure you got the whole thing. But get a Bible and read it. And the church said, amen. Amen. It is our tradition to stand for the reading of the word. I know you've been standing a long time. It's going to be a quick read, and then you can sit right back down. It's just our way of reverencing. Matthew 24, 36 through 39. How many of you know Jesus is coming back for his church? So his disciples, they wanted to know when he was coming. And so this is what he says. He says, but of that day or hour, no one knows. Not even the angels of heaven, but my father only. But as the days of Noah were, so also will the coming of the son of man be. For as in the days before the flood, They were eating and drinking and marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark and did not know until the flood came and took them all away. So also will the coming of the son of man be. What he's saying here is if you want to know what it's going to be like when Jesus comes back, it's going to be just like it was when Noah was back there preaching to them that a flood was coming and they didn't listen and they didn't get in the ark. And it's going to be just like that. And boom, the flood's going to come and everybody who didn't get in the ark drowned. But this time he said it's going to be with fire, not water. And I don't know about you, but I don't plan on getting burned up. The, the sun we experience in Thibodeau and South Louisiana is all the heat I ever want to know. I don't want it to get any hotter than that. And so I'm believing that God is going to wake us up today as a church. Some of you are going to stop playing games with God. Some of you are going to stop just attending church. You're going to start being the church. It's going to happen today. It's going to happen. So I want to continue our series, The Church Has Left the Building, because the church is more than a, a building. The church is a movement of people who spread the gospel and disciple the saved. And so I want to preach on the subject, building something more than a building. Father, in the name of Jesus, let us not just be hearers of the word, but doers. May somebody respond, God, so that you pour out your spirit on their life. And God, I pray the people who've come in here with bondage, depression, oppression, addiction, sin, that they leave here free, because whoever you set free is going to be completely free. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said amen. Amen. You may be seated. You can look at your neighbor and say, he's probably going to preach to you today. He said that the coming of the Son of Man, talking about Jesus, is going to be like the days of Noah. Now, some people don't understand that. We call it the rapture. The Bible doesn't call it the rapture. It just calls it return of the Lord, return of Jesus, where Jesus is coming, and he's going to come for what he calls his bride, which is also known as the church. So you're Jesus' fiance, and he's coming to marry you. He's coming to get you. So if he finds you with another man, you're not going. Come on, jealous women. Y'all should have amen me. 
Y'all should have said, "Uh uh-huh. Because he wants a bride without spot and without blemish. And the only way that's going to happen is if you're covered in the blood of Jesus and faithful to him. If you are faithful to other things, other gods, and you're dabbling in the world, you're unfaithful to God. And so when he comes, the Bible says he's going to blow a trumpet. And the dead in Christ will rise and all those that are alive will go up in the sky and meet Jesus. We call it the rapture. It's just the day of the Lord where God comes back and he gets us and he brings us into himself, which is a beautiful thing. The question is, we don't know when that's going to happen. And everybody wants to know when, right? I mean, I cannot tell my kids, we're going we're gonna to get y'all a snowball. We're going to win, win, dad, win, win. Right now, right now, right now, right now, right now, right now. You know what? You're not getting a snowball. But anyway, we always want to know when. And he says, look, it's not meant for you to know when. Because if you know when, because you know if, if Jesus was come back in seven days, some of you would party for six days straight and then try to come to church on the seventh day and get it right. You know you would. You would pill around. So he says, you got to live every day like it's the last day because you're not promised tomorrow. And so you got to be ready when Jesus comes to get you. You you can't be. Some of you women need to listen to me. You can't be like, give me 10 more minutes. You know how you are. I just need a few more minutes. There is no few more minutes once Jesus blows the trumpet. It's the most serious and sober thing you will ever think about in your life. Because you got to be ready. And he says, when this time comes, it will be exactly like the days of Noah. So let's go back to the days of Noah. The Bible says that the thoughts of men had gotten so evil that all they thought about all day long was sin, sin, sin. I wonder if that's how it is now. Where all day long, all we think about is sex, 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 drug, alcohol, partying, all this music that in sensual, it, it makes us sex creatures instead of God worshipers. It makes us addicts instead of prayer warriors. It makes us broken instead of whole. It, it, it's what the world does and it, it's corrupt. Everything you see on TV, everything you hear in the radio, everything you hear in your neighborhood, everything in the schools is evil, 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 just like in the days of Noah. Men had corrupt imaginations, and let's just pretend for a second that what it must have been like where all of the world was corrupt and and God was frustrated. Let's just make some stuff up. Maybe they didn't call men men anymore and women women, and maybe homosexuality was celebrated, and maybe church was mocked and made fun of, and Jesus followers were persecuted. I don't know. It's something like that. Maybe they mock the preacher who preached the flood is coming the flood is coming the flood is coming but 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 there were a few people who, who were they they decided they were going to get on the ark it was Noah and his family because they found favor in the eyes of God you know why they found it because they were looking for it I need somebody in this room who's looking unto Jesus the author and the finisher of their faith somebody say yes and so it was evil, it was, it was bad, it was nasty. People just, they didn't dress right. They walked around in nakedness and shame and I don't know, maybe they posted stuff on, on, on social media. You know, Jesus is good, showing cleavage. What kind of foolishness is that? The Lord is good. I know, good enough to make clothes, go put some on. We, we got we, we to gotta wake up, church, because we're claiming Jesus on one side of our lips and living in the world with the other. And as it was in the days of Noah, he couldn't hardly find anybody to serve him. But God ain't worried about how many people follow him. He just wants to know who follow him. He's never needed a bunch of people to validate his word. He said many are called, but few are chosen. He just needs a few people who said, God, I'll do whatever you tell me to do. And so it was evil and it was wicked. But Noah found grace in the eyes of God. He found favor with God because he sought the Lord. And God said, I want you to build an ark. 
Sounds so familiar. So everything is sinful. There's a few people who still love God. And he says, I need you to build an ark to save whoever will listen to you and serve me to save them from the destruction of the earth. I'm trying to see if I could think of something similar to that. I know. I, I figured it out, y'all. The world is corrupt, like right now, full of sin. And then God calls a man to preach the gospel that fire is coming and that hell is real. But heaven, you can go there if you get in the ark, um, the church. That's what it's called, the church, where God is building the church on Jesus Christ. And everybody who turns from sin and gets tired of that rebellious living, if they get on the ark and get in the church, when the fire comes, you're going to be rescued and meet Jesus in the twinkling of an eye. And you're going to go to heaven and you're not going to go to hell. Whew, look at your neighbor and say, I'm getting scared up in here. You can't take swimming lessons for what's coming. And he said, there's only one door. God, I feel the Holy Ghost in this place. There's only one door. You see, all this stuff where there have been interviews. They've interviewed major pastors in this country over the years. And they asked them, is Jesus the only way to go to heaven? And they literally have said, well, there's a lot of ways that you can go. To one door. Only one door. He is the only way and the truth and the life. You're not coming into the church of God except through Jesus Christ. It is the only way you can get on the boat because once you get in the boat, not too many people reject getting on the boat called the church because of the dimensions of the boat. We look at the restrictions you see, when God teaches us his rules, it's not to oppress us, it's to protect us. Before there was ever an STD, God preached righteousness in our lives that sex was only supposed to be between a man and a woman in marriage. But we got outside of the boundaries of God thinking that we could indulge in our own ways and now we have STDs and illegitimate children and all these perversions and all these addictions. The reason why is because we got out of the ark. And so people say they don't want the ark because of the dimensions because you look at the beautiful landscape of the world in Noah's day and it makes sense. They thought they would always have that. So they rejected the limitation of the ark for the indulgence of the world. And so they thought that they could just indulge in the world. It was a no-brainer. I mean, look how much fun we're having up in here. And look, y'all got to be in there with all those smelly animals. Y'all got that crazy church where they raise their hands and shout. I know we don't act as normal as y'all do at y'all concerts. At the party, come on, you don't act civil in the club. I'm talking about y'all get so crazy at that church. We know what y'all do in the club. Stop it. We saw you at the Saints game with your shirt off, painted black and gold, needing Weight Watchers and Jesus. <laughs> Talking about we crazy for praising Jesus? Get in the ark. It, there's a reason we come here and celebrate Jesus because we were bought out of sin into the freedom of God and we have celebrated ever since. I choose freedom, but they look at the ark, and hopefully this is not you. And you look at the ark and you say, I don't know if I can do that, man. I, I, those dimensions, I got all this freedom out here. But you're not going to have that freedom when the fire and judgment comes. And what we have today is a society of people that only preaches the promises of God but the promises are only meant for people who are obedient to God. So when you're disobedient to Jesus, you don't get his promises. So what you have is full churches with empty hearts. And you have pre preachers who are willing to preach a promise that the people he's preaching them to will never get. 
Because you're preaching something for them that they have not committed to. Because if you tell them that salvation from the flood exists outside of the ark, it is a lie. The only way you're going to be saved when Jesus blows the trumpet is if you're in the ark. And the ark is the church and Noah is the preacher. And the preacher is telling you, Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. You got to get out of sin in the world and you got to get into Jesus. As it was in the days of Noah, so shall it also be. The coming of the son of man. Can I talk to you for a minute? Y'all quiet on me. I'm not going to create a competition, but the first service like my preaching way more than y'all do. Okay? As in the days of Noah, so shall it be when the Son of Man comes. Where they'll be eating and drinking and marrying and having a good time, thinking that we are getting away with our indulgences. Thinking that, I mean, what's the preacher preaching about, man? I can, do, I can just do this. What's the big deal? And God is calling you and he's saying, wake up, people. We're getting close to the end. And I want to do some studies. I want to teach you eschatology, which is the study of the end times. I want to teach you where we at in the end times because we're getting closer. Once they sign the peace treaty in Israel and they share that worship ground and they build a third temple, we've got seven years. When they sign that peace treaty, we've got seven years. We're getting close. You know why I know we're getting close? Because Trump proposed the treaty to them. They've denied it. They're arguing. They're fine. The whole annexation and all that stuff going on in the news. Go read all that. All of that is the end times. When that happens, when they sign that peace treaty, we have seven years left until the day. And we're just living like it's no big deal. We're partying like we can repent tomorrow. We're indulging like we can just get it right another day. And God's saying it was just like that in the days of Noah. But let me warn you, the door will shut before the flood comes. There's going to come a time where it'll be too late for you to turn your heart to God. And some of you are not promised tomorrow. You say, Pastor, why are you trying to scare me? Because I want you to be saved. I want you to get in the ark. I want you to receive Jesus. I want you to have God. They did a study on rats. And they, that's right. And I don't know if you have ever read this. And they put some drug water in there. And, and some regular water. And the rats got addicted to the drug water, most of them OD'd, but all, almost all of them were addicted. And so they did another experiment later on, which really they haven't talked a lot about, where they put a bunch of rats in a cage and so that they would have a lot of friends, they would have a bunch of toys and everything, they called it Rat Park. And they did a TED Talk on it. You need to go watch. It's pretty interesting. And the whole idea was that they created a rat utopia and then put the drug water and, and the regular water in there and zero rats OD'd in that environment. Teaching us that, that all of God's creation was meant for connectivity. We were meant to be together. And so what's happening is, and you see it in the world, the enemy has launched to where he doesn't want you to be a part of a church because he knows if you get connected to Jesus and each other, you will be undefeatable and you won't want, you won't want the things you're addicted to, all the drug water, the alcohol stuff, the sex, the immorality, the lies, the fighting. You won't want it. Why? Because you're a part of God's family and you're in the ark. And we learned that addiction is more about connection and disconnection. And God is calling us. And so he's like, Pastor, how do I get into the ark? You gotta go through the door. There's no other way to get through the ark. It only had one opening. It was the door. You had to go through the door to get through the ark. And that's what God is asking you. He's saying, get on the ark, but you gotta come through the door. Now, what's the door? Let's talk about it. The door is described in John 10, 9 through 11. Jesus said, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. The thief, everybody say Satan, cometh not but for to steal, to kill, and destroy. But I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd 
and the good shepherd giveth his life for his sheep. Jesus was saying, I invite you into my ark called the church, but you gotta come through me. You can't come through your own deeds. You can't come through a religion or a denomination because some people won't come to this church because of denomination oppression. The only way you're coming in to the ark is through Jesus. And so Jesus is inviting all of you to come into the ark. But I'm gonna tell you what keeps us from going through the door. Do you know what it is? It's sin. Sin is literally defined in the Bible as missing the mark, which means that God sets a standard for his creation and we don't achieve up to it. Anybody could say you pretty much missed the mark? Okay, anybody lies? I won't get you to raise your hand on this, but just think about it. You ever cuss somebody out in your mind? I learned that in Bible study. A guy confessed to us that he mind cussed. I was like, I think that is a thing, actually. You ever mind cuss somebody? You ever just mind flick somebody off? That's sin. It sounds ridiculous, but it's true. You ever missed the mark? You ever lusted? Don't raise your hand. Don't raise your hand. You ever thought about somebody other than your wife? You better act like you don't know what I'm talking about right now. You ever cheated on your taxes? Don't do anything. Don't raise your hand. The government could be watching. You ever forgot to pray and read your Bible? You ever skip church because it was a sleeping day? You ever talked about the preacher? Raise your hand. I'm just. <laughs> you ever read a scripture and said, oh no, I'm guilty of that. You ever wanted to forgive somebody but just struggled forgiving them? These are missing the marks. You ever wanted to do something powerful for God, went to do it, you just failed miserably? Missing the mark. You ever read the scripture where husbands are supposed to love their wives and you realize you haven't loved yours like God would want you to? You ever read the scripture where wives were supposed to submit to their husbands and you're like, not today, Satan. It's a sin, it's missing the mark. This is the block that keeps us from walking through the door of salvation. It's sin. And most of us, whether you were raised in church or raised somewhere in another part of the world where there was no church. It doesn't matter. You all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And so here we are as broken people. And the only way we're gonna be in God's church is through the door of Jesus Christ. And there's only one way you're coming into this body of believers. It's not by showing up on Sundays because what God is building is more than a building. And most people think because they walk through the building, they're in the boat. But the building and the boat are two different things. The boat is through the spirit. The building is just where we worship. And as we learn, we may not always get to meet in the building. But we don't have to meet in the building. We got something built on the inside of us called salvation in Jesus Christ. God is calling you. God wants you to enter the church. And there is a way. Nicodemus had a meeting with Jesus. I mean, what a cool thing. You ever read the Bible and just be like, man, must have been awesome. Like Nicodemus gets to sneak and meet Jesus face to face at night and have a Bible study with Jesus. Like when the word is teaching you the word, you ought to learn something. And Nicodemus said, what do I have to do to enter this ark? What do I have to do to enter in the kingdom of God? And he said, you must be born again. Nicodemus was like, I don't know, Nicodemus might have been Cajun or something. He's like, man, man, what you said? He said, I can enter my mother again and be born again? You know, he thought Jesus was talking crazy talk. He said, no, Nicodemus, 
You must be born of water and of spirit. That's what being born again is. You see, being born of water is being born in baptism, where you bury the old you in baptism and take on the name of Jesus. And we speak the name of Jesus over you because if the enemy comes to attack you and you're still you, you won't make it. But if you're a new creature in Christ, when he comes to attack you, he points to G- you can point to Jesus and say, that's who I am now. I'm like my Jesus. And there's a wall of defense there. And he can't talk to you. Because let's be honest, if there's no Jesus, Satan could accuse you of some stuff. Some of y'all act innocent. Y'all were guilty. But with Jesus, you're completely free. You're completely set free. So when we baptize, we do it in the name of Jesus. And you will not see any other example in scripture than baptizing in the name of Jesus. People today baptize in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit. But there is no example where they did that. When Jesus said to baptize in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, they knew what the name was. It was Jesus. For there was no other name under heaven given among them whereby they must be saved. Whatever they did in word or in action, it was in the name of Jesus. So every example of baptism they have in the New Testament, they do it in the name of Jesus because that is the name that gives you power and authority over sin and Satan. So when the enemy comes against you like a flood come on somebody like a flood as in the days of Noah you would lift up a standard called Jesus Christ and his cross against it and he would have to flee I read my Bible where it says resist the devil and he will flee why because I've got Jesus in my life come on somebody I need some help in here and so the sin keeps us from walking in the door It's not that you gotta get good enough to walk in the door, that's a lie. You've gotta be surrendered enough to walk through the door, which means you gotta give up you. And that's why it's tight in here right now, because you love you some you. You love you a lot. Come on, look at your neighbor and say right now, come on, be honest, you love you some you. And you need to love Jesus a little more than you love you. I hear that so much now. I deserve this. I'm going to take care of me. Self-care day. You need a prayer day. (laughs) I'm going to just leave it alone because I'm just second service. And you're contemplating and you're fighting in your heart because giving up you is the hardest thing you'll ever do but it's also the most rewarding thing you will ever do. Because when you give up you to have Jesus, you are now protected with a wall of defense and you step in that ark. And yeah, that ark is a little smaller than the rest of the world, but there'll be a day when the ark is the only thing left. And it is worth it. So if you're contemplating right now and you don't know whether you want to be born of the water and of the spirit, because the way they were born of the spirit is when they were baptized with the spirit, they spoke in another language. They spoke in tongues. The reason why is because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So when your heart is full of God, it speaks newness. So it's almost like a baby talking for the first time. It doesn't make sense and words, but it's speaking because it now has a voice because it's born. When you get born again in the spirit, you're going to speak out and confess that Jesus is your God and you're going to speak in tongues when you're born of the spirit. So I want to tell everybody, you must be born of water baptism and spirit that's spirit baptism and that's what God is calling you to and I'm going to guess right now because the way you're looking at me that this is challenging for some of you because to walk through the door of salvation and to give up your whole life for Jesus sounds like maybe it would be too much but can I encourage you it's not too much it's the bare minimum Because when you see what Jesus did for you and the life you're going to have in heaven, you're going to say, it was worth it all. 